Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafting with Slavi, where we make cards and other paper crafts. In today's video, we're going to be making this adorable waving pull tab card using Lawn Fawn's special delivery. Now to make the card, to get started, I did cut out two panels out of the large stitched rectangles. I took the first panel using the cloudy stencil here and I ink blended and a background using the cloudy stencil because you know all the clouds using distress oxide tumbled glass ink and some blending brushes now the other panel I also cut out of stitched hillsides as well as the large stitched rectangle so that I would have a matching um, stitching on the bottom of it and I ink blended it using Twisted Citron Distress Oxide and Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide. At the time that I was ink blending this, I wasn't super crazy about just the one layer effect, so I actually took out my Grassy Hillside stencil as well, and I used it to ink blend um, more of the Mowed Lawn into the center of the panel. Now, I have been trying to be better about doing some water splatters because I do think that they're really pretty and um, to do the background um, here for the clouds I smooshed some of the distress oxide tumbled glass onto my work surface and I added some of the lawn fawn liquid stardust to give it that little bit of sparkle and I repeated the process for distress oxide twisted citron and mowed lawn uh, with just water but I did not add the liquid stardust for the grass. I do like the darker water droplets and this is my first time doing this technique with Distress Oxide inks actually and you'll notice that the water droplets are a little bit more white because of the underlying pigment um, and formulation of the Distress Oxides. Now. Before I started coloring, I did take a couple of my letters that um, had the blank spots and I mentioned it in previous videos, which I will link here. I love this stamp set because it is very versatile. It came out with the Valentine's Day release, but um, the sentiments make it really um, versatile to use with whatever. And I chose to stamp out many thanks and hugs onto my little letters and they're going to go inside of the box. So. With the special delivery um, box add-on, you do get those two boxes in the top right there. And the one that's open, there's an extra die that you can actually use to cut out a slit in there so you can stuff things in there. And I just love stuffing things in that box. I think it's super cute. Um, going back to the card a little bit, before I started coloring, you'll see that I had actually ink blended um, the pieces for the pull tab. So the pull tab itself, I just used tumbled glass again. And for the little arrow, I used mowed lawn to get a nice little contrast so that you can actually see it. For the Copic blending here, or ink blending if you will, I guess it's all kind of ink blending. Um, for the Copic blending, these two colors, the Y00 and Y02, they don't actually like to play well together. They're right next to each other on the Copic color chart um, and arguably they should work well together but they don't always blend well so if you are a Copic marker user or considering using them I still highly recommend them I love them I would never want to go back but um, you do have to kind of play around with blending techniques to make sure that some of these colors blend well together and I am actually going to be releasing a little bit of a series of YouTube Shorts videos shortly after this video. Um, I'm going to put out three a day for a week and then go down to a regular schedule after that. I don't know if I want to do one a day or just one a week on a different day than my regular release day. We'll see. And um, I'm going to be doing some swatching because I've been wanting to do that for a long time and I think that this the swatching lends itself really well to the YouTube Shorts format. If you're not familiar, it's kind of like a TikTok, but for YouTube. And um, hopefully you like it, you check it out. 
and let me know what you think in either the comments there or let me know if you're excited in the comment for this video. I would love to hear what you have to say about how you like the YouTube shorts. But anyways, so I'm going to be doing the Stress Oxide blends, the Stress Ink blends, and then some of my common Copic color blends. Um, I do use some pretty simple Copic blends, usually just with two colors, so um, it's just to give you a little bit of inspiration. And I am going to be heavily referencing Sandy Allnock's hex chart for Copic colors because she has identified some really great color combinations that you wouldn't necessarily think of because they're between different color families, but they play well together and they blend really well together. Um, and some of them, I mean, you, you'll have seen them because I use them a lot in my videos. Okay, now back to the card. I have started ink blending in a very specific, or Copic blending in a specific way, where I start off in my shadow areas with the darkest color, then I go over that same area with my lightest color, and I go back over the whole image with the lighter color to achieve a, a better blend. Um, Especially when you are blending things like these bees together, the blues, they don't like to play well together, even though they should because they're right next to each other on, um, on the chart, but um, they don't. So you kind of have to work it a little bit, and that's one of the ways that I work it. There's uh, several techniques, and if you guys are interested, let me know, and I will definitely be doing a video on that in the future so you have an idea of how I go about blending my Copic markers. Okay, so far, if you are getting value out of this video, please hit the like button. And if you are a new subscriber, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you join my tribe. And yeah, let's get back to the video. So I just went around and I colored all of these little bits and I'm almost done. Um, for I wanted to actually draw your attention to this. So this is an RV and an R colored marker. and. They blend really well together. This is one of my favorite red combinations and it blends a lot better than the bees did which is kind of funny. Okay and then to finish off my little bit of coloring here um, I do recommend using something like craft pick here for those little teeny tiny images so that you can get a good hold of them. And then I just went in with the C00 and C1 for my more contrasty white look with deeper shadows on um, these white pieces of mail, just because it is a look that I prefer. I think it uh, gives it a little bit more depth. And then for these two images, I have decided that this way of ink blending it or of coloring it is my preferred method. I tried to do a little bit different with the airmail here and I was not thrilled with the results. So. Okay, now on to assembly. So this is the waving pull tab. So we are using the thumb notch um, die that comes with the starter set. And then using this, it's like a piece of plastic, kind of the same thing as a stencil. And we're using that to align the die that comes in your special delivery die set. And there's, um, the Waving Pull tab came out last fall with the Snow Much Fun stamp set. So there's another one in there. So depending on which stamp set you're using, you do have to get the die set just to be able to cut those notches apart um, where they need to be. And I ran that through my die cutting machine. And then let's talk about these brads. So you'll see these brads that I use have a flat top. And the reason for that is, is I, I did have some domed top uh, brads that I used when I was making my first couple of reveal wheels back in the fall. And I was not crazy about how they looked through the card because they kind of make an impression when you press the paper down. And I didn't like that look. Um, so I had gone out and I purchased these. They're just Recollections brand from Michaels. And here, back to the card, I did have to flip that around. So this die and um, this mechanism, I guess, is really forgiving. If you do make a mistake where you put it on upside down like I did, you can absolutely just swoosh it around and it's fine. Um, so anyways, back to the brads. I find that the flat top brads are just better for 
um, these kinds of assemblies so they don't poke through and leave an impression in your cardstock. If that doesn't bother you, then by all means use the ones with the dome top, but it really bugs me, so I went ahead and I found some of the um, flat top ones. Now there's this stabilizer piece, which is kind of like a stopper as well, so it doesn't go down any further um, than it needs to. You adhere that to your card base, making sure everything is nice and straight, and then you put adhesive on the little piece, and it doesn't matter which side you put it on. You can either put it on the inside like I did or on the top and then bring that other side over top of it. Um, I've seen lawn fawn videos using both ways, so it really doesn't make a difference at the end of the day, whatever you prefer. And then my sentiment, there is this cute little stamp in the stamp set and it just says who is the best, like H00, because it's very punny and I like punny, punny jokes. And um, I stamped that on the card before I put my foam adhesive on. Now you want to make sure you have foam adhesive, foam adhesive on the back of your card um, so that your mechanism can move up and down. After I put all the adhesive down, I do like to test this a lot. Are you one of those people that when you have an interactive card, you just play with it over and over and over again? It's like you can't stop. It's just so gratifying in a weird way well I'm those people so I uh, I say it's because I'm testing it to make sure nothing's getting stuck but really it's just a lot of fun to move those wings up and down and super cute so I peeled off the backing paper off of all of the foam tape and I adhered it to my card now when I adhere my uh, panels to the back of my card I do like to use um, a straight edge of some kind so you'll see in this case I did line it up with my my work surface and aligned it that way to the edge of the card so that none of the pieces were sticking out I then flat adhered the grass pieces to my panel because I have that box add-on so it's going to be sticking up a little bit and I didn't want to have to figure out foam squares and stuff so that's fine from here on out, I'm using foam squares to adhere all of my little images or liquid glue. And the liquid glue is my preference. I found that when I started card making, I completely did away with my tape runners and any kind of like dry adhesive, I guess you could say like that. I just, I find that the hold is not as awesome as the liquid glue. So I stick to the liquid glue. Now. I did plan the sentiment out, I swear, <laughs> but so this is the, the word use spelled out using Oliver's stitched ABCs, also from Lawn Fawn. and for some reason I didn't realize, again, because of the interactive elements, I always forget how tiny the cards are, I always think I have all this real estate, and um, I didn't realize that the Oliver Stitch ABCs were going to be quite so large. I could have switched to a different stamp set, but I don't have another Lawn Fawn um, ABCs stamp, sorry, die set. So I stuck to it and just kind of went with it. Um, here I am, I'm just putting all the letters in. So the way that I like to stuff these in the box is I just find the placement that I really like and then I adhere them. And once everything is adhered, that's when I add my foam on the back. If I'm using foam, whatever the case is. I forgot to do this with this uh, yellow bird. Um, normally, I put all the pieces together before I stick my images down, but um, which is why I had to go in and do this with the foam squares for the hat, because I like to have it tilted sideways a little bit. And um, anyways, it's whatever you prefer. Really, really, at the end of the day, it doesn't really make a difference, and I mean, it's an easy enough fix, so it's all good. And then for the box, I did use a combination of the thin foam squares and liquid glue to glue it down just so it kind of looked like it was floating, but also tucked in. And the nice thing about gluing your elements together like that and then putting foam squares on the back is you don't have to worry about overlap, and everything just kind of sticks together nicely. Okay, so now back to the sentiment. I did kind of move it around all over the place, for those of you wondering why I didn't put it elsewhere. Um, and I decided that I actually really liked it on the 
sky background, kind of lopsided. I think it's kind of whimsical and adorable. And um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm pretty happy with the result actually. So not too terrible and uh, should have laid that out ahead of time. For those of you who don't lay things out, make sure you lay things out. Don't be me. It's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. <laughs> and this is the finished card. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new here, this is Slavy from Crafting with Slavy. Please consider subscribing. And otherwise, here's some more videos for you guys to check out. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.